everybody, it's Alice K. Recklehaus from Threshold of Hineni, and I'm here to do a quick tutorial with you working in my floriculture journal from a Melody Made floriculture kit that I really love, digital kit. Okay, so yesterday we made the cover. I haven't stitched it in yet. I will be showing you when we do that. But first I want to get as many of the pockets and things like that in because we won't, it, it's just a lot harder after we stitch it. Some people do stitch their pages in before they do anything else, and that's fine. Um, I have a feeling those people aren't sewing though, because it is really hard to get it into the machine once you've got it into the book. So what I wanna do today is a couple, this is like super easy, but I love these. We're gonna do a couple Rita Donnelly flips. Rita Donnelly is the lady who developed these, and they're corner flips that also, they flip up like this, but they're also a pocket, so it's really cool. So these are gonna be small ones, and I'm going to use, I like to use scraps for this. I make some that aren't from scraps too, usually. I'm not sure if I'm gonna have room in this uh, journal for any that aren't made from scraps, but we'll see later. Um, so I wanted to show you, this is one way to use some of your larger scraps. I have a piece here that is, um, it is about, three and a half inches by about three inches, so three by three. And that's probably the smallest that you wanna make it is three by three. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a square and I was gonna prep this ahead of time, but I realized some people might not know how to do this. I think most of you probably do. But you're gonna take it and you're gonna fold one corner down so that you've got the edge lined up with the other edge here. Let me move this paper because I think we'll have more contrast and it'll be easier to see on the table. Okay, so I'm folding this corner down so that I have my edge lined up with the other edge here. And then I'm gonna cut off this white part here because that's extra. And this will make a perfect square. Okay, so I've got my perfect square. I can look and see which side do I want to show. Oh, I want that side, that's really pretty. Okay, and I'm gonna go ahead and distress and I'm distressing the edges, but I'll also show you I'm gonna distress more than just the edges. Okay. <laughs> you don't have to <laughs> distress, I just really like to. I guess I'm heavily influenced by Gail Agostinelli and she distresses everything. <laughs> she does not like any white. I'm, I'm not quite as um, obsessed with <laughs> <laughs> distressing ink as she is. Um, I do have some journals that I don't do any distressing at all, but if it's, you know, anything that's either slightly grungy or slightly vintage looking, and this has kind of a vintage look um, because of the vintage drawings that she has in here and just the, and the coloring, I think, lends itself to the distressing. Now I do have um, a couple of other colors. I have pink well, I have several different browns, but I have pink and I have a blue that I just recently got. Okay, now I want to distress the whole inside edge and I'm going to also slightly distress the inside because I don't want it to be stark white, but I will also distress the middle fold because if you look at some old things, you'll always see that that middle, anything that's been folded has gotten darker. Okay, so we want to do that too. And see how I'm kind of letting it, the letting the distressing ink come, not just on the edge, but coming in a little bit here, because that's kind of how things darken. They don't just darken in a straight line. They, you know, little bits of it come in and creep in on the paper. Okay, see so like that. Okay, so anyway, so if I have something that I'm doing that's got like a really clean look, or um, whites in it and stuff, then I don't distress that. But otherwise, I really enjoy distressing. It's really relaxing. And if I want to go sit with my husband, I grew up with, you know, the goal for women, the gold standard was Proverbs 31. And it said, you know, she does not eat the bread of idleness. So it's really hard for me to just sit still. So without doing something productive, which I'm not sure that's a good thing. I think that, you know, we probably carried it way too far because I think that there are times when you really should just be still, right? Doesn't God even say be still? Okay, so that's the inside, how I've gotten it all kind of distressed and everything. 
Um, I'll show you an example of a journal that I'm working on that I'm not distressing. Because see how this has like brighter colors? And okay, here's a Rita Donnelly flip. So there's a, a, you can put something in there and then you open this up like that. So that's what we're making. Okay, so see how this has like brighter colors? So I wouldn't want to distress any of this. Okay, so we've got this one and I want to have one more. And I was thinking I would use some of this. This is part of a page from Melody's Kit and I changed the color on it on Google Docs and I cropped it um, so that I could use it as another side tech, but I have enough side techs because this journal doesn't have as many pages as I'm used to using. I'm making it kind of small intentionally. Okay, so I'm going to do the same thing. I cut it some and I'm going to fold it so it's even along the edge there and that way I know where I need to cut it to make the rest of my square and these are just these are fun you know one of these days I want to sit down and just work on a whole bunch of things like this just to have a whole bunch of extras um, that I can just put into books as I do them put into journals as I do them but it seems like I always have one that I'm working on specifically for somebody and it's got kind of a deadline and so I only have time to work on stuff for that <laughs> And one of these days when I don't have something specific with a deadline to work on, that's what I'm going to do. I even have kind of a system set up for storing all those <laughs> because I thought that I would be doing that. And I just think it'd be fun to just sit and do a bunch of ephemera, pockets, texts, you know, just all those kinds of things ahead of time in, you know, you usually end up using a couple of color schemes that you really like. You know, you kind of boil it down to that. And I have two, maybe three basic color schemes that I use a lot. And I've only been doing this since December. I mean, I don't want to sound like I really am an expert at this or anything. I'm not. I've, but I've done a lot of it since December. <laughs> um, I just really became obsessed with them when I, when I found out about junk journals. Um, so it's like, you know, if you boiled it down to just a few color schemes that you use, and I didn't do that on purpose, it's just what I like, um, then you'll find that you could make a bunch of ephemera that would fit those color schemes really easily. And you can just get a bunch of stuff ready. And then, you know, there's some things that you'll want to do with paper that echoes what you've got in the book. Um, you know, like doing this digi kit, I want to use a bunch of the designs that Melody has done. I'm using those again and again throughout the book because I just like to do that. To me, that makes the whole thing cohesive. Um, or I'll use like one artist. Um, like I have an artist on Pixabay that I'm doing a journal that uses mostly her work, um, her photography, because I just fell in love with her photographs. And so I'm using mostly that and then, you know, a few other things too, but, um, you know, basically the same color scheme throughout. And so I'll use a lot of the pictures of a lot of her pictures throughout it for things, but there are some things that I could do ahead of time and they would fit in there just fine. Okay. So we've got two flips that are ready to go in. And I need to decide which side I like better of this. It could be that side and you've got these little buds there. Or it could be this side which has a little bit of the the bottom of the flower. I'm thinking probably this side, but I like both sides. And same thing with the lace. I prefer this side, I think. But this one's nice too. So either way. So we'll just see where they fit. Okay, and one thing that I did go ahead and add since our last time was a doily. I love to put doilies into um, into my journals and that's not unusual. A lot of people do that and I was waiting until I had a chance to coffee dye it but I'm not sure when I'm going to do that because it's just so hot. So I may not do any coffee dyeing until I get really desperate. So either I'm going to leave it white because I really think that doesn't look bad or I'll use the distressing ink on it but I'm kind of leaning towards leaving, leaving it white. You know, they're so thin that I think the colors 
yeah, I think I've got it down to the thinnest. I think the color of the page behind it kind of comes through. And I like to put it on a page that's dark or really bright that will contrast with it. And then see over here, even when I open it up this way, it contrasts with it. And we might do something to decorate that. Okay, so anyway, part of my point in turning there is because I don't want to put anything big on this page because I want to have the contrast for the doily. So I'm thinking that I might put one of these Rita Donnelly flips here because that doesn't get in the way of the um, doily. Although, if we put something into the flip, that would get into the way of the doily. So maybe I won't put that there. Okay, well let's, we can come to back to that if we don't have another place that's better. So let's look and see what we've got. It could go there or even on the, nope, the opposite page has something else already. So it could go there and that would be fine. And actually I think that the lace would go better. I kind of want something that has some green though to go across from that. So let's see what else we've got. I don't want to cover up this, um, this daisy, but I could do this from up here. And that actually might be really good. Let's see, or would I rather have this? I think I like this better. Okay, I like that lace. I might make a few more flips if I have space for some of those. So having a top flip works really well too. Surprisingly, it will really hold things well up there. So, uh, you know, even when you tip the book up and stuff. So I'm going to, you know, if I wanted to sew it, I would just sew right here and here on this edge. But today, believe it or not, I don't really feel like sewing. I feel like gluing. So I'm gonna glue. So I'm just gonna do these two edges, the corner, all the way up and the corner all the way up. I'm not going to do across the top because, and I'm running my nozzle through it just to spread the glue out so that it's not, so it doesn't make bumps on the other side. You'll see what I mean because at some point you'll probably make bumps and then you'll go, oh, that's what she was talking about. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so. I'm going to put this up here. Look how easy this is, you guys. I mean, if you need something to put on a page and you can't figure out what, this is the thing to do because it literally just takes a few seconds. It takes longer when I'm trying to explain it, of course. But when you're just doing it yourself, it'll just take a few seconds. And if you have a bunch of these corners ready, then it'll take even less time. Okay, see, so something can stick in here. And see how it just stays? I mean, I'm shaking it pretty hard and it doesn't fall out. So you can put something in there that way and that way I'm not gonna cover up this daisy. So let's see what's on the other side. Ooh, same thing. We have an empty space. I'm not sure I like the brown on that as much. I might do another one with lace for that because I do like having that there. Okay, let's see what else we've got. Ooh, that might be pretty. Oh, I like that, and that kind of reflects the brown from over there. Do I like it better there or up on the top? I think, actually, I like it better up on the top. Okay, there was one other place where we had something at the top, and we said we needed to put something on the bottom. Do we want that? No, I think I want something green there. Okay, so we're going to put this up on the top. I usually put them on the bottom. I rarely put them on the top. Usually I'll have, like, maybe one or two up on the top, and then I have tons of them all through the book on the bottom but this time I'm putting both of these on the top and that's all that I'm going to put in for today of these Rita Donnelly flips um, and I will link her but I'm going to do one more thing for this video we have a pocket in the kit that I want to use Okay, see, so we've got that, that's all ready. Let me just wipe it to make sure that no glue came because I really don't want my pages to stick together. <laughs> okay, and then we can set this aside for now. And, um, okay, so I don't know if you can see on the camera because I was looking at it when I made just the quick overview. There are lines around this for you to cut out to make a pocket, okay? And so, um, I'll, you'll see it when I when I cut it out at least so there's this pocket and then there's also a little tag down here and I've printed on the other side with another one of the pages from her kit 
uh, because I didn't want it to just be white on the inside because some of the inside will end up showing. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this out. So it's been really crazy here. Sunday, we went to lunch with a friend of mine from online that I had never met in, in person. Isn't that one of the fun things about Facebook? That you make so many friends from all over the world. I mean, seriously, you guys, if I wanted to travel the world, I would be able to visit a friend pretty much every place that I wanted to go. I mean, not necessarily stay with them. I don't want to just invite myself to stay with people. <laughs> but, you know, I could at least go out to lunch with them or something. I'd have somebody that I know in each place, and I just think that's so fun. So anyway, this was a gal from uh, North Carolina, and she works at the same company that I work with teaching Chinese kids online. And she said she was going to be going near where I live, down 75. I live in Sweetwater, which is, uh, I think it's like maybe four miles, three or four miles from 75, so it's not bad. And so we met for lunch. And then um, my husband had a mini stroke. <laughs> it was really, really scary. It was the second one that he's had. And um, I'm still pretty shaken up by that. So, that's kind of, if, if my voice sounds funny or if I suddenly burst out crying, <laughs> that's what's happening. Okay, so we could do this two ways. We could do it like this, or we can do it like this. Okay, so I think, well, this makes the flowers upside down. This would have some flowers peeking out at the top that are right side up. So I think I'm going to do it this way. Okay. And then I'm going to fold these. There's not a line, but you can tell where they need to fold. They just fold between, you know, where you've cut it here and where it cuts here. Just fold the flap. It's pretty obvious, I think. But I'll show you in just a second, just so that you no for sure okay so you this part here you're going to fold in and this part here you're going to fold in okay and then i'm going to fold this up so i've got this beautiful echo die that melody has done and then we've got these buds peeking up from the top all right so i'm going to put some glue just on the edges here now this poked up a little bit right here. I actually kind of want to, well, no, I'm going to leave it like it is. Okay, I don't want to mess with things too much and make it too complicated. Okay, so I'm going to put a little bit of glue up along the top right here and then down this edge and I'm going to put it here and up to there. It comes all the way up to the top. Okay, so I'm kind of like instructing myself as I'm telling you because this is a little different from any of the pockets I've done before, but I think I can figure it out. I think I've got it figured out. Okay, and then let's go ahead and do right up here. This is what's gonna be the top, and we'll just do a little bit along here. Okay, because that'll end up being, you know, along the edge here. And on that upper one that we did first, this right here, you really don't want to get too close to the edge because if it squeezes in, it's going to close the envelope or close the pocket and you won't be able to get anything in. Okay, so you want to do that kind of carefully. All right, let me get my cosmetic pad and... Oops, see yeah, I didn't get it fast enough and I've got little bumps. I don't know if you can see those little tiny bumps there. Okay. In this case, it's not so bad because it's not going to make it difficult to write on this, but, um, it could be. Okay. Let me just get my journal really quickly. How's our time? Oh yeah, we're fine. Okay. Let me get my journal quickly. I want to make sure that this fits on the page. Yeah, it does. Okay. So let's kind of figure out where we're going to put it because that will help us know how to decorate it. Ooh, we could put it here. 
Okay, and then we can make a card that has a lot of green in it, and we can put a little bit of green on here. I'm thinking, not sure what green I have. Okay, so I want to put a verse on, I know that, and this is a nice big space, so let's tear the biggest verse that I have. I went through Philippians and just kind of chose out verses that mean a lot to me, and I think I'm going to be able to have room for more, so I'll probably choose some more. Um, in case you haven't figured out, I really love scripture. I really do. Scripture has been like lifesaver for me so many times. It's just what's gotten me through difficult, difficult times. So I try to keep it in front of me all the time. Okay. And also, you know, I think of junk journals as being something that's not just for myself, but it's kind of a legacy for me to pass on. I think that, I hope that someday my kids or someone else will find my journal and be attracted to it. I've written a lot of journals, you know, but most of them are just, you know, pretty notebooks and there's not much to really attract anybody to this, but since this is kind of interactive and stuff, I'm hoping that my descendants or someone else will spend time in it and that they'll just really be blessed, that there will be things that they can learn from me and the lessons that I've learned in life that maybe they can then skip learning those lessons because they've learned it the easy way through me. And then they can learn their own lessons and make their own mistakes, you know, but I don't know, I just see it as kind of a legacy to pass on. And so since scripture is so important to me, the scripture, even though I'm putting it in here primarily for me because this is my journal, I'm also putting it in to encourage whoever else ends up picking up my journal at some time. I'm also making a journal for a friend at the same time. It's not from this digi kit, unfortunately. I would do it from this digi kit totally if I hadn't already printed out stuff for her. But I had found things that I thought would be perfect for her and I also printed out some pictures of her and her family and her husband and her at, her, at their wedding and you know made those look like they're antique pictures and stuff. And um, I'm doing a journal for her, but I did some of these verses at the same time. And some of the pockets and stuff that I'm doing in this, I'm going to do there. Okay, so, and you can either, with this, um, with this pocket, if you want to, you can fold it down like that and make it into more of an envelope. Or you can leave this sticking up and make it into a pocket, which is what I'm going to do. Okay, so there's different ways. And if you want to decorate both sides of it, then you could either make it a flip out, which we haven't really done a flip out yet, have we? We need to do some kind of flip out so that you can see how that works. You can make it a flip out or you could just have it as a floating pocket like that other one that I have with the beads. Um, so that would be good. Okay, now I kind of want to see if I can find something green. Am I on camera? Yep, I am. Okay, I want to see if I can find something green to put with this. And I also want, I think, some lace. What do we have here? Some lace would look pretty, I think. Let me see what I have in the way of fabrics in here. Ooh, I have this lace too that I haven't used. That's from the Dollar Tree. That's kind of fun. I've got some green ribbon that would go well with that. Don't really have any green fabric in here. I have orange because that orange one that I'm working on. Ooh, I have some corrugated cardboard. I don't know. I kind of think that that looks too delicate for the cardboard, but we'll see. I have this green yarn that I can use. What do we have in our box? That we can use. Oh, there's green trim that came with the kit. We should use that. That would be really nice. And then I also have, oh, I kind of like these though. Yeah, I'm going to use this. That's really pretty. Okay, so I'm going to use one of these leaves. 
and there is no way that I'm going to fussy cut this because that's just, that would be crazy. Some people will. I, I don't mean to say that you're crazy. It's okay. If you fussy cut it, that's awesome. More power to you, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to kind of get the general shape around it. Mm, I think this is going to be really nice. Okay, and then I'm going to be careful because I don't want to wreck it. I want to be able to use the rest of it later. So let's just cut this off and then we can, it'll be easier to, I call this semi fussing cutting because I'm not going in among all the little tiny nooks and crannies, but I am kind of going with the shape, sort of, kind of. Okay. How's that? That's nice. I like that. Okay, let's give that a little bit of distressing. Now, lately, you guys, my camera has been shutting off after 30 minutes. That's why I'm trying to keep these down to less than 30 minutes, which is probably a good amount of time to keep them to anyway. But if it does shut off, it will continue. It keeps taping, and it just tapes in another one, and I will just post the rest of it, which will probably just be a few minutes. I'll post that on the same day so that you can see that. It's kind of hard to get in there where you've got your little nooks and crannies, but you can do it, and then you end up getting some of the ink on other parts of it as well, which is not a bad thing. In fact, I'm going to, right here on top of the envelope, I'm gonna go ahead and put on some distressing ink here, and if it gets on the envelope, that's fine too. Okay, see little tiny bits and pieces of it got on the envelope, and that kind of looks neat. It just adds to that look. Okay, so let's put this here. Am I on screen? Yeah. This here, do we want, I think the corrugated cardboard would be too much with that. Do we want this lace? No, I think I like this better. Okay, so I'm going to put this lace here. Okay, probably about there, but let's lay it out just to make sure that I know what I want. Maybe a little bit farther in, because I want the leaf to definitely overlap it, but I like it going up into that corner. And then I've got therefore which can go right here. If there is any encouragement in Christ, if any consolation of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any affection and compassion, make my joy complete by being of the same mind, maintaining the same love, united in spirit, intent on one purpose. Okay, and then I can put the reference here, or I can put it down here. I think I'm going to put it down there. Okay. So help me remember where I'm putting all those things. If I had thought this through, I could have sewn the lace on ahead of time, but like I said, I don't really feel like sewing today anyway. I just feel like gluing, which is very odd for me. Somebody should be here to check and make sure that I'm not sick because I really don't like to glue very much. <laughs> and so, but I love to sew. So it's really odd for me to not feel like gluing. Okay, and I got some glue on the paper, which is okay. I, I kind of wiped it up, but I, I didn't really wipe it up a whole lot because that's right where I'm gonna put the leaf. And even if I didn't, seriously, you guys, this dries so clear. You really don't see anything from it. So I'm gonna do that there, right? So it goes up in the corner like that. Okay, so I'm going to, I wanna make sure I get the stem really well. I wanna go around the edges but not right at the edge. You don't need me to keep saying that, do you? I'm kind of saying it just in case anybody is watching for the first time and hasn't been watching the whole series. Okay. Another thing that you could put on that looks really pretty is music. Like just tear a little bit of sheet music. In fact, when we're done, when I'm done here, um, my husband and I are going to go up to our house in the mountains for the afternoon. And 
we tried to move there a year ago. We had sold this house and it fell through at the last minute. I mean, like the day before we were supposed to be out. So we had moved everything up there. <laughs> we have just a little bit of furniture here. We've been using one of those little tiny dorm refrigerators for a year now. In fact, we went for three weeks without any refrigerator. Um, and so anyway, so every once in a while, I mean, we go up there like about once a week or more because we just love it up there. It's beautiful. But um, our washer and dryer are up there. <laughs> we don't do our wash there because we don't have a septic system yet. We do. He's actually at the laundromat right now doing our laundry. And then we're going to dry it up there which works out really nicely in the winter because when we were up there in the winter, the dryer kind of heats up the whole, um, the garage. It's a four car garage and that's where we have kind of our workspace. Um, so what was I saying? Oh, so I have some music books up there and I, my piano is up there and I want to start playing my piano again, but I know that I'm not going to get to the really advanced stuff in the music books. And so I'm thinking of, this is how obsessed you become with junk journaling, you guys, that you would cannibalize your music books. I'm thinking of tearing out some of the pages from the end where I know that I'm not going to ever play because it's going to be too hard for me. Um, and using that because I love the look of music in junk journals. It's so pretty. And I love music. I love singing. I love playing the piano. I'm not super good at playing the piano. Um, I'm a little bit better at singing, but not great. Um, and I used to play the clarinet and the sousaphone, which we won't even talk about. I'm not even sure I could do either of those anymore. Okay, so I think that's good. You can add more to it if you want to. Um, you know, maybe like a little bow or something. 